All right, so this is um, going to be the next project. Uh, I talked about last time sketching out things that are simple shapes, um, basically like flat materials or objects that you can create bigger things, right? So this is an example of that. Um, now this one goes a step further because this one I've actually cut holes so that would have a bit more detail inside there. So for this assignment, you don't need to cut holes, but if you definitely wanted to, it adds realism to it. Things like screws, bolts, nuts, that kind of thing, all add a realism to your scene. So the more detail you can add uh, to what would actually make this be a realistic item, um, all the better. Now that does get a little bit further into just the mechanics of how these things work, because as I look at this, <clears throat> um, this here, this is here, this is here. So all of these things are like locked together. There's no way for any of that to swivel, so that if I were to animate this, just thinking ahead, I would know that all of this stuff here, there, and there would all be grouped together and then it would all move just like that, okay? Um, now, if there was something else, like I changed how the hinge is set up and maybe it rocks, so that could be something else of how I set it up. This is obviously not a standard uh, water wheel. Water wheel. Because usually those just have these like slats in them or they have grooves. This one is more like, um, well, like a roller coaster type thing. Oops. So that's typically how they are like that, okay? So as I'm modeling this, I'm kind of thinking about how I want this to move. There's a good example there too. Okay, now one of the reasons that I went with this kind of design was because I thought, hey, it would be kind of neat if I actually 3D printed that. So. Um, this is the 3D printed version of that. I don't have the buckets, those are printing right now, they'll be done before the end of class. And then those will fit right on these poles right here. And then once I, um, everything is separated, there we go. So all the pieces are separated, so I can paint them all separately and then glue it all back together and then it'll work. I'll actually be able to like spin it. So something you should think about as you're building your stuff is what do you wanna do with it? So that's something that you can take your models, even your weapons here, and we can take those weapons and actually 3D print them. Not huge, that size, okay? Um, so that's what you can kind of think of. Another area you can think of like what you can do with your stuff is that. So there's my, um, this is a different wheel. This is not the same one. Oops. So this one, if you looked inside your panels and you went to new camera, one of the options is stereo camera. And the stereo camera is a left and right view. And so as it renders out two views, um, I'm able to take those into Nuke or another or After Effects, and I can actually make a 3D camera. So if you were to look at this with the glasses, you would see that that looks like it's popping out. If anyone wants to see, the glasses are right here. Anyone? Yeah. as long as you can see it. Some people can't. They have depth perception problems or something where it doesn't work. Let me make it bigger so you can really see it. There you go. So it looks like it's popped out. The background looks like it's knocked back some. Yep. Okay, so that's definitely something that you can do uh, with your stuff. Your goal in this class is not just to get an A, your goal in this class is to figure out where you wanna end up, how you're gonna set yourself apart. All of these things are ways that you can set yourself apart, okay? Um, imagine sending in your demo reel or business card or whatever it is and having 3D glasses with it so they can watch your presentation in actual 3D. There's also other ones called um, chromatic glasses where they block out one color and that one color pops. So let's say that you had red, I think that's the main color that they use. You put the glasses on, anything red automatically pops out of the screen. It looks like a regular image, it's just whatever's red just is in front of the screen. Um, so just think of different things that you could do with your stuff. All right, so first what I wanna do is go over the nuke part. Like if you render out passes, how do you then put them together, okay? Um, because it's important for you to see how do I break something apart and how do I put it back together. The 3D thing is actually pretty simple while this is still loading. Ignore this stuff for now.
this is all the actual, like, to, to make it 3D, I have this render, and then I have that render. So you can see how they're off just a hair. And then I joined the two views together. I told it to be anaglyph, and it's done. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Okay. So here's where my water wheel uh, started off. And then going from here into putting all this stuff together, that's what the below stuff is going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take this off to the side. Let me break these. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to look at it and I'll go through step by step how I would do this. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a Should have worked. Layer contact sheet. There we go. I'm gonna do a. Uh, this is called a layer contact sheet. So all the passes that I rendered out are stored within this layer contact or stored within this file. This layer contact sheet just lets me see them, and then see what they are. Um, as you get into doing this professionally, you may see different passes. Uh, one company may use this pass. Another company may use something else. They all have their pipeline that they use. Everyone's different, so you kind of figure it out when you go to a company what it is they use and just kind of follow in step. Uh, some of these are universal. So depth and ambient occlusion, typically everyone's going to use those two. The rest of them are pretty much like whatever they end up wanting to do. Okay, so um, I'll keep that off to the side just so I can see it if I need to, but I shouldn't need to see it. All right, so this is um, Nuke's interface. Some hot keys that you'll need to know is middle click is moving this around or moving this around. Um, right clicking is right clicking, but um, alt, middle click, there we go, and drag does that. And the same thing down here. Okay, there's new hotkey sheets over there if you want a new hotkey, new hotkey sheets. Um, to read files in, I'm in this node graph area and I hit R and then I go and find my file. And so for this, I want to find just one of my images right here. So this is water wheel, wherever it is, doesn't matter. Pick up that one. Okay. Um, this is all node based. So you'll see instead of having a timeline and a traditional uh, workflow like you would see in After Effects or Premiere, um, this is what we have are these nodes. To view a node, you click on it and then you would hit number one. And that sets it to the viewer to say, I want to view number one. If I wanted to also see this one or toggle between them, I could set number two to that one. And then if I click up here, I can switch between one and two simply by clicking on the numbers one and two. Okay, this is one of the powerful things about it because if you're in After Effects or something and you want to see what does just this layer look like or just this set look like, you can't do that. You have to hide a bunch of stuff and then see it. Here, any point in the chain, I can just say, what does it look like here? All right, so I'm looking at this. So I'm going to start extracting stuff. So the first thing I want to do is I want to um, pull out the ambient occlusion. So I'm going to hit tab, and then anything that I need to access is through this tab menu. So I type in shuffle, and shuffle, you can just figure it as extract. It's going to pull out information. So I'm going to pull out the ambient occlusion. And then I'm going to rename it up here, AO shuffle. And then to apply the shuffle or the ambient occlusion to that, I'm going to click off, hit M for merge, and then connect this A here, this B here. Okay, there's an A and a B, that's what I just connected. To view the result of those, I have to hit one on the merge, and then I can see this is the result of these two, two things merging together. So imagine in Photoshop, you had a picture here and a picture here. You want to merge them. Right now, I was just viewing just one of the layers, not the merging combined. Now I want to see what they look like merged. That's what I'm seeing. It's set to over, so I don't see anything actually happening. So I set this to multiply. And just like you would see inside Photoshop, now the top layer is multiplied on top of the bottom layer. A is multiplied on top of B, the bottom layer. If I want to see what it looks like with that and without it, I'm just going to hit D. And that disables the layer, and you can see before and after, basically. 
So you can see the details there that the ambient occlusion brings in, just a nice little touch. Okay, uh, and then let's go to um, shadow. So I'm going to pull the shadow out of here too, because I think the shadow I maybe want to have a little bit darker. So I'm going to click off. <clears throat> I'm going to type shuffle, and I'm going to connect this shuffle to that, and I'll pull out the shadow mask. And then on the shadow mask, I'm going to merge. The A will be my shadow mask. The B will be this. And I'll make sure that I label this one shadow shuffle. And then I will click on that, hit one, and there's my shadow. Now it's coming up on this merge as an over still. Come on. Uh, so maybe I'll try multiply. No, that's not good. Maybe I'll try min. No. Maybe I'll try a top. No. Let me go look and see what the shuffle is. So if I click on this and hit one, now I can see what the shuffle is doing. Okay, again, a great thing about doing it. So this isn't like black like we would think the shadow would be. This is just straight white. So instead of us getting the shadow, this is the shadow's mask, which I pulled out, which is just showing me where the shadow is and the density of it. So let me just unhook that, get off there. And I'm going to create a uh, constant. So I'm going to hit tab and create constant. This is just a black solid. If you're in After Effects, it's a layer, just a solid layer. I'm going to connect this to that, see what the merge looks like, and set this merge to be a multiply. So black times anything is going to be black. I'm going to take this shuffle, this is the shadow shuffle, and use a, that as a mask. So I'm just going to drag this mask arrow, and now I have a mask on there, which then gives me a deeper, darker shadow. I disable it, re-enable it, so you can see what it looks like. If I don't like how dark it is, I can go to that multiply, and I can dial it down or pull it up. Okay, This is the power of doing this in post. You have a lot more control here, a lot quicker, than you would inside Maya. If I tweak the shadow on Maya, I have to wait for it to re-render again. Okay, This is happening to every frame when I hit play. Okay, so I hit the space bar just so I can see this as full screen, just to kind of make sense of this. So uh, the, the uh, comparison I like to make is, think of this like a river. The very top of it is the start of the river, and then it flows down to all these nodes, and eventually it comes to something, okay? So here is the main river. It sent a little, uh, or let's say a lake, the main lake. It sent a river over here. It sent a river over there. You can see the arrows flowing. It also sent one here. These two joined up here. And then this one joined up right there. Okay, and then this constant is also in that mix. Uh, now I'm going to add a Z to focus. So I'm going to uh, click off, hit the tab key, type in Z to focus, and then connect the image to that. I can't see it yet. I can see the dotted lines going to merge. So I hit one, and now I can see it. If I go to my depth channel and set this to depth, there it is. If I set my math to direct, now I can take this dot and move it anywhere I want, and that item or that area will be in focus. So now this is in focus. If I want that in focus back here, now that's in focus. And again, if we were to do this in Maya, this would take forever to do. I can then play with the size of my field. So by going uh, up with the depth of field, let's say to 10, let's say 5. Nope, I think 10 was probably good. Uh, we get a little bit of softness. You can see right here it's pretty soft, but right there it's pretty clean. And then I can take the blurriness up if I need to. Still thinking. Nope, oh, there it goes. Yep. And then you can really see the amount of depth of field I have on there. So let's pull that back down. That's way too much. There we go. So now we have a little bit of softness in the background and then that. Okay. So in the simplest form, that's it. So I have my read node. I'm extracting the ambient inclusion. I'm extracting my shadow. And then I'm um, 
putting it all together using merges. Okay. Uh, another cool thing about Nuke is if you look at somebody's, ignore this stuff. If you look at somebody's node graph, get rid of the dope sheet, get rid of this. Uh, just by looking at this, you can tell exactly what's going on. So just this image, you would know, okay, they pulled the ambient occlusion out, they merged it with a multiply. They pulled the shadow out, they merged that using a mask with a constant right there, and then they did a Z to focus. You don't know the settings, but you know the gist of the flow of this uh, graph. And then if I wanted to, let's say I um, wanted to add a vignette, I can add another constant. I'm just going to merge it in. If you have something selected and you hit merge, then it'll automatically connect it. Okay. So this is going to be black or uh, multiply. There we go. And then on this mask, I'm going to draw a shape over here. So I'm going to add a roto and then just draw a circle. rotate it and then I'm going to pull these things out these are um, feather lines so After Effects does have it now it didn't before but you can actually feather um, a path which is pretty awesome uh, I'm going to go over here where the ellipse is I'm going to click on this invert there we go and now I have a vignette Okay, and then again, the benefit, here's my current one. I'm going to just drop in a um, dot node. It'll just collect all these things into one node right there. If I change something, I just drag this over. And now I have my new one connected. And all I have to do is then go to my Z to focus, pick my point, and now everything's updated. Now imagine if you had that in Photoshop or you had that in After Effects, it would be a lot of going through a lot of layers to duplicate and, rep and figure out how to get this whole thing set up. Let's get back there. Close all my properties. Cool. So now uh, we read our file in. I'm going to go and read it out. So I'm going to come down here, hit tab, and type write. And then view the right. Okay. I'm also going to view the read just so you can see how it reads its files. So when it brought the file in, you'll see that it comes in with the name of the file, a dot, and then a bunch of pound signs, and then a dot, and then an EXR. <clears throat> That's how it knows it's a sequence. If we had just had one image, we could call it waterwheel.tiff. Uh, but it doesn't do that. We have a sequence, so it needs to know the whole thing. So I first tell it where I want it to go. So I'm going to put it inside here, water wheel, right, out from nuke. That way I know where it's coming from. And then I put a dot, I put uh, three pound signs, and then I put the kind of file that I want. So in nuke, you don't pick like I want a TIFF or a JPEG or whatever. You type it here, and then when I hit enter, it'll bring up the options for a TIFF. And then I could choose a, you know, a EXR or a JPEG or whatever from here. So there's what I want to name my file. There's where I want it to go. I'm going to hit render and then hit OK. And now it's going to go through and render out those 120 files and give me a new set of 120 files. And that new set will have all those changes I did to it. So once this is set up once, all you have to do is come back into here, open up your file, replace that top one, and then choose a new Z to focus. You might have to adjust colors, uh, but everything else is pretty, pretty simple. Like you can see where this is the simple one. This one's more complex. This one I'm really tweaking each element. Okay, we're not there yet. But here it is again, just a simple setup. Here's the shuffle for the ambient occlusion. I did a grade on it to give it some color, um, some contrast. I merged it in. I did a Z to focus. 
Uh, this one I also added a glow to it and some volume rays and then merged it all back in. I don't know if it'll update while it's rendering out. I really don't need it to render out. I guess I just let it go. No, it doesn't want to. All right, so there's the after and there's the before. So you can definitely see there's a huge enhancement from one to the other. Now, that's not to say you couldn't do that with After Effects or you couldn't do it with Photoshop. It just Nuke makes it a lot easier, okay? Not at first, obviously, because you're going through and learning how to use all the stuff. But once you have that grounded, it's like pfft, amazing. We rendered it out, we brought it into Nuke, we did our stuff to it that we wanted to, and now we're going to go into After Effects. For this part, you just double click in this area, find your first file. So I'll grab not that one. There we go, out from Nuke. Uh, I'll make sure I clicked on any one of the files in the sequence, make sure it's on TIFF, and then hit Import. Uh, if I drag this down to new comp, you'll see that my background is there. Everything shows up pretty. Um, if you bring anything in and you're missing stuff like oops, that, um, that's because your transparency is coming over from Maya. So you just have to right click on it, interpret your footage, main, and then set this to ignore. And then it'll bring in the whole background sky and everything. So now that I have this, there's my wheel. I can go to File Export and then add this to a Media Encoder queue. This will take it and actually put it into a QuickTime movie that I could then turn in. Okay. Uh, media Encoder will take some time. On these computers, it might take 10 minutes to load up if it's never booted up. The first time, it goes slow, uh, but then every time after that, it'll go a bit quicker. Um, Mine's still taking a minute. There we go. All right, so what should happen is Media Encoder is going to open up. Um, on the top right here, we'll see my project should load. If it doesn't load, that means that it's still thinking. Okay, so don't do anything else, just let it load. If you did exactly what I said, which is file export add to media encoder queue, it will connect it or you'll get a warning message. So nothing has popped up yet, I'm still waiting. And again, this process might be a minute or two minutes or five minutes. There it is. So it's set to H264, that's what I want. I'm going to click on this to tell it where I want it to go. 2520, weapon, uh, movies, and then I will call this Sarcona wheel. Obviously yours is the weapon, so you would call it weapon. And then you just hit play. And then this will go through, connect back to After Effects, and make that into an actual movie. Now, some things from Nuke you could actually do inside After Effects. So, like the vignette, there's nothing fancy there. You could do that in After Effects. Um, if you wanted a title, you could do that in After Effects. If you wanted something, a transition, you could do that in After Effects. But all the compositing stuff, this stuff, uh, that would all be done inside of Nuke. There we go. So, now it's done. So, when you turn your stuff in, uh, P drive. Here's my weapons folder. I'm going to copy this to my desktop. And you'll see this folder is huge. Um, I've basically been saving everything that I've played with in the past two, three weeks into this folder. So I have like three gigs. Um, you have to go through and clean out your stuff so I don't have a bunch of files that I don't need. Um, there's only six or seven in here. 
7 times 4 gigs is like 28 gigs, and I don't have that much space. Uh, so I'll let this think. Cool. All right, so what I need turned in, in your scenes folder, I don't need all of your scenes. All I need is your very last scene. So if you go to your date modified, you find your last scene. Everything else can be deleted. I don't need any of your substance files. I don't need any of your backups, your archives. Whatever is your very last scene file, that's all I need. Uh, in your source images, I need your textures. And if you used an HDR, the HDR. Okay, if there's anything else inside there that you didn't use, don't uh, save those in there. Um, you'll notice that inside here, there's a ping. Oops, ping, ping, ping. Okay, there's pings for each one of these images, but there's also this .tx. Whenever you render inside of Arnold, it takes your uh, ping file and converts it to a .tx file. So you'll always have two there, just leave the other ones there. Um, I don't need anything from assets or autosave or cache or clips or data. Inside your images is probably every image you rendered. I don't need any of that, so you can delete those. Your movie should have your movie in it. <clears throat> don't need render data, don't need scene assembly, don't need scripts, don't need sounds, and don't need time editor. <clears throat> so you should be turning in these three folders, movies, scenes, and source images, and workspace. Okay, so those three folders and that. And all you're going to do is just copy this folder, go to your Z drive on your computer, it'll say 2520, turn in weapon, and then you'll paste your weapon right there. Okay, and then your sheet that you have that we filled out, your submission form, you'll drop that up here. I have a uh, to be graded folder over here I'll put over there. So you just put your to be graded thing inside that. Okay? Questions on that? Turning stuff in? No?